Rule kept the door open that they would take a possible transfer portal quarterback, but said, I feel like the starter for this season is already in that room. Uh Um, So, you know, I think they're always open for a depth possibility. Um, But again, it's got to be the right guy. And it's really hard to find somebody that makes sense at this point, especially if all three quarterbacks are staying put on this roster. Yeah, here's what he said. Yeah, just like you said, Sean, I think we have, he said this. I think we have our starters sitting in that room right now. I think we have three guys we believe in. But, but if a young player comes along or a depth player comes along, he said, you know, I don't go looking in the portal, but I'm also not stupid. It, it, it would take quite a like fit, like a, like a guy that's willing to take a back seat to a highly touted quarterback and maybe a back seat to a veteran quarterback. Could happen, mm-hmm. but I doubt it. I doubt that's. I doubt. I really doubt it will happen. Yeah, really. Much only way I say that happens is if somebody leaves. Like if oh, yeah. one of those three scholarship quarterbacks transfer, then you need more depth. Yeah. So probably more out of necessity than actively seeking another guy. Okay, let's fly through these topics. I want to make sure we get through every group on okay. the offense. But running back, we got a good taste of Dowdell. He had the game's longest run. Dante Dowdell, the transfer. Emma Johnson played limitedly. I don't think they really played him a ton. Um, in this game, Ramir Johnson, Gabe Urban Jr. out as far as full contact this spring. So, it, and then we saw Quinn Ives. It, it's a it's a hard room to read as far as what direction they plan to take that running kind of, back. Kind of hard. I think you can say this in the spring. It was clearly Emmett Johnson that, and I'm told that that Emmett Johnson was easily the best running back in camp. Now, that's Ramir Johnson wasn't there. Well, he was there, but not he was limited, and Gabe Irvin was really limited. So the question becomes to me, I my guess is it'll be Emmett Johnson. That's my guess. Hmm. Um, he's he is he did a good job of taking advantage of the situation. I still think Ramir is a situational back. It, I guess the question becomes can Gabe Irvin come back? And win the job again from. Emmett He's won Johnson. the job twice in his career. Yeah, can he do? Yeah. Can he? Can he pull the trifecta? I don't know. I, Emmett Johnson, uh, he's just a sturdy, good, reliable back right now. I think Gabe is the X factor, just because with the way he's put together, the skill sets that he has, he just looks like what you would envision a bell cow Big Ten running yeah. back looking like. Problem he is, he like just, he's only shown minimal flashes right. just due to injury. So. You know, that's an X factor. That I don't know if you can necessarily lean on. And so that being said, sure, there's a potential. He could vault his way back into that conversation, but I'm kind of with you right now. Coming out of the spring, I'm leaning towards Emma Johnson just yeah. because I think he's he's the guy that can do everything the best out of that group. Well, and Dowdell really left. I mean, you, you were intrigued. I mean, he mm-hmm. played was pretty well. I mean, he he's fine for a guy that they brought in with three years of eligibility. I mean, that was a good picture that he showed in that spring game. Pretty good picture, Sean. I mean, I really like him in short yardage. He, he's just about what I thought when he got down by the goal line. He's powerful. His burst is okay. He had that, was it a 49-yard run? Mm-hmm. And now it was important to note that Rule said that's the first time he saw him do that mm-hmm. this spring. It wasn't like he was doing that. But he got around the corner, and he outran some lower unit guys, I think, um, which was fine. I mean, it was he's good, but I don't. I think he's third or fourth. I mean, I, I don't. Yeah. I think he has a lot of work to do. His ceiling today would be about third. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah which yeah. you you might play at third. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. you could definitely use like play. six guys last year. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, you got no, no. Don't get me wrong. Dowdell's got to be ready. He's got to be ready. And guys, wide receiver moving to position groups. I thought that was the most upgraded position on this football team. I mean, quarterback yep. too. Besides quarterback, uh, yep. but wide receiver with Jamal Banks, Isaiah Noir. Uh, Janiron Bonner with his kind of reemergence back at receiver and then Ja'Cory Barney and before the injury, Demetrius Bell. Yeah. Um, you know, that was a really impressive group. And then Malachi Coleman and Jalen Lloyd. I mean, they, they have a lot there where I think a year ago that was a deficiency to this team where I think this year it's going to be a strength. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the receiver room versus the running back room, the receiver room's in better shape. And the oh, yeah. running back room is good. It's deep, but there's not – I mean, there's more excitement in the wide receiver room. I think that's the way to put it. There's more – I mean, it's just – they're pretty well stocked. It's not 
overwhelming, but it's good. It's definitely better than last year. Well, you think about how good that picture looked in the spring game, and that was with Banks hardly seeing the field at all, and Malachi right. Coleman not even playing. So yeah. those are two potential starters yep. that <laughs> that barely even were a factor in that. So I mean, with the passing game looking like that, with the, the explosive dynamic down the field, the ability to actually functionally execute the the bubble screen and tunnel screens. Oh, bubbles, I mean, yeah. like they they've got Ooh. a lot of versatility and a lot of options in that group. I said on a show this week that Dylan. He made guys that came here that you thought would be good that hadn't done anything. He made those guys look good. Mm -hmm. And when you have a quarterback that can get it out yeah. and time it right, all of a sudden guys that didn't look very good here look good. I've never been more excited about a bubble screen in my life. Uh, <laughs> they, they, that's that because of Bonner. Mm -hmm. um, because of it's been uh, like 10 years since of, they've executed the those plays. Because of, of Banks. Cool. Yeah. And uh, Nayor was the one that looked like can block look like uh who's the broncos receiver that always caught those tebow D demaris thomas okay yeah <laughs> yeah well I mean, alex bullocks looks serviceable too he had some nice catches in the spring game well, he's in the he's in the rotation oh, yeah. now you, one way you can measure the receiver room is through bullock i mean bullock was a starter last year now he won't be a starter this year but he'll be in the rotation when isaiah garcia castaneda like where will he even factor in mm -hmm. uh, yeah he's he'll have I mean, if they go to seven or eight, that's where he'd factor in. Or an injury. Injuries happen. Injuries happen. Yeah. And then you tight end, not a lot. I, I want to get I want to get in the offensive line though, as we wrap up offensive headlines here. Um, you know, we we didn't get to see Bryce Benhart or Ben Scott, but it was good to see Micah Mazuka out there at left guard. And you noticed him. I mean, his blocking was impactful and clearly a guy that is built to be a starter on this line and it was good it was good that he finished out the spring in my opinion on a high note Ab absolutely it, it now just like we said going into the scrimmage it, it was hard to read it was really hard I, it was hard to even see who was out there sometimes they're mixing and matching right but yeah mazuka being out there and looking like he did was yeah that was definitely the highlight but i i have a hard time with the when they're mixing and matching on that on both lines of scrimmage it's really hard to get a good read for what you're looking at yeah and they, they weren't doing anything crazy in the run game they're facing a vanilla defense and so yeah. like it's yeah I, I have very minimal takeaways from yeah i don't the running game part of it especially with the offensive line